So uh, since we're going to spend somewhat of a disproportionate amount of time at, with this particular phyla, with Chordata, um, I'm going to just start off here with an, an overview, break down the subphyla with some uh, general characteristics, and for two of the subphyla, this will pretty much be all we cover with them. Uh, there won't be any additional lectures for them, and then we'll spend all the rest of the lectures going through the different uh, groups of the vertebrata, which will just be one of the subphyla. So we have um, three major subphyla uh, for the chordata. All right, so we have the one called the, the Eurochordata. The Cephalochordata. And the Vertebrata. So we'll go over each... Uh, these two mostly right now and then I'll just introduce the characteristics of the vertebrata and then all the rest of the uh, lectures on the phyla will all just be uh, going through vertebrates, um, skeletal structures, muscular structures, the, the evolution of the group and then we're going to come back uh, looking at some of those organisms plus all the other you know animals looking at some uh, molecular regulation of development and genes and things that are shared among really all animals um, that control different regions of their, their body. Um, and that'll be kind of where we finish up with animals uh, before we go on to e ecology. So, Eurochordates, a, a group often referred to as the tunicates. So what we're looking at here, this little blobby structure, is this. Okay, so this is the adult uh, tunicate, and the outer tissue here is called a tunic. It's usually a very tough uh, material. This is also called a uh, solitary type tunicate, and it has the, the basic body plan. There's another type of uh, tunicate, or eurocordate, called a uh, colonial tunicate, which is then reduced, and there looks just like a blob, sort of, but it's actually made up of multiple little um, cloned segments of the animal, um, kind of like a coral, it's like cloned polyps. It's that along the same sort of idea. Now, what we have here for this uh, is a filter feeding system. So we have a siphon here, like we've had in some other animals, with an in-current, and then we have... A digestive system which is this sort of filter feeding basket type structure which is essentially the which would have been the pharynx with the gill slits in the, uh, the larval form which now is uh, developed into uh, this sort of filter feeding apparatus we don't see some of the hallmark characteristics here we don't see the notochord you know, or the, the nerve cord, uh, although we do see the, the, the pharyngeal uh, gill slits. We also don't see any kind of tail because it's just a, this sessile animal. So where are those things? Well, what we find is this is just part of the animal's life cycle. So when they reproduce, this is just a filter feeding adult. So the word tunicate refers to the outer uh, tissue layer called the tunic. They're also nicknamed sometimes uh, sea squirts. And that's um, more because um, if people collect up a solitary tunicate and you hold it in your hand and kind of squeeze it, it squirts water out of it because they kind of store this, uh, water inside them if they're taken out of the water. Um, and, and Or you can actually have them squirt water in your face. They'll do it themselves if they're agitated. So if you were going to pick one up, they might have water get, uh, squirted at you by the animals that contracts its muscle. So that's why they're sometimes called sea squirts. When they reproduce, um, they'll put their gametes into the water. The gametes then undergo fertilization and develop into it's usually referred as a tadpole larvae, but it's I find it kind of dangerous almost to call it that because 
not a frog larvae. That term is usually used with amphibians, um, but it has that kind of look to it, you know, and, and so it does have kind of the mouth. It does have uh, pharynx with the pharyngeal gill slits. Um, it has mouth to anus. Then there's a little bit of a tail, the post anal tail. Uh, it will have uh, its notochord and the hollow dorsal nerve cord. Uh, also here, nerve and notochord. And obviously it has the, the pharyngeal gill slits. which then becomes this uh, filter feeding apparatus upon uh, metamorphosis. So this little uh, swimming larval form the larval form of the Eurocordata displays all the core or hallmark um, characteristics of the chordates but then they undergo a metamorphosis and then they become this uh, sedentary filter feeding organism, they then tend to lose the nerve. Well, they keep a nerve cord. It's just not a hollow dorsal nerve cord. It's still a hollow, uh, do hollow nerve cord, but it's rearranged uh, in the animal's body. It's to a new location. Uh, they don't have any notochord at all. Uh, and obviously they lose their postanal tail. So those things are completely lost. And like I said, this nerve cord is just rearranged. Uh, to a new um, location. But they keep the pharynx, which becomes their filter feeding apparatus. So those are the, the Eurocordates. Um, you know, these are also uh, marine animals. All right, we find them in the oceans. Uh, they're obviously, then that means they're aquatic. And uh, we find them in, in, all over in a variety of habitats, sometimes even in brackish you know, water as well. Um, but uh, all different types of climates, you know, warmer waters and colder waters and deeper waters and more shallow. But obviously as a filter feeder, they need a large amount of plankton in the water in order to feed. So usually in areas where there's more productivity uh, is where you'll find them. And that's kind of all we're gonna really go into with them. So just kind of know that the Eurochordates are a group of chordate that displays the characteristics in the larval form, but the adult does not. We then have a group called cephalochordata. These are sometimes called lancelets, okay, or amphioxus is another uh, term for one of the members you know, of this group. Now, as an adult, they display all of the chordate traits just as an adult. So you can actually see uh, if you were to look at one of these animals and they are uh, alive today, um, they they usually um, burrow into sediments and they orient themselves, which is one of the greens, so I'll kind of try to do the same thing, um, in a way so that they are buried like this. They use the tail sort of to dig. Um, and what they have is that little tentacles that kind of stick up out of the mouth region and, and they just kind of filter you know particles out of the water pull it down over their um, pharyngeal gill basket as well and then they have a complete you know digestive system they have the hollow dorsal nerve cord they have a solid notochord um, and, and the tail obviously as well so they have all of the main um, structures uh, and they're fairly small kind of little animals, little fish-like sort of animals, um, but not a fish um, because we'll get into that in a little bit as far as what, what we need to have for those uh, characteristics. But the, what the important significant thing about this particular group is um, 
that they display all the characteristics that we talked about as the core hallmark shared characteristics uh, as an adult in uh, a very obvious sort of way. Um, so that's kind of a nice living group of organisms that is related to the ancestors of these organisms and in others we see how they you know altered or rearrange those characteristics or, or features but they actually display it so it's a really nice thing to actually have uh, as a living organism something that you could use to describe an entire group and then we have the vertebrata which is what i said we're going to spend a lot of time on now a weird thing about the vertebrates is the name vertebrata you'll sometimes also see in place of it craniata and that's because all members have a cranium so a skull some uh, skeletal structure protecting the brain they all will have this all right these organisms don't have these don't really have a brain uh, these do have a sort of a, a brain area at uh, the start of their um, nerve cord but they don't have any um, bony skeletal material really protecting it but this group does now most have vertebra but not all. all right so there are some members of the vertebrata so it's one of the things um, that don't have vertebrae uh, but they do have a cranium so all every single uh, member has a cranium now uh, where do the vertebrae come from you know and then what about the other features well this group is going to then you know, have its brain we talked in the past lecture so if you haven't seen it then you can go back and take a look a little bit at the talk that I gave about neuralation okay so what happens is um, I said the during embryonic development the ectoderm folds inward it's directed or controlled directly by the notochord. So that solid notochord sends chemical signals to the uh, ectodermal layer above it, causing it to fold inward. The folds then, all these neural folds, then create the tube that forms the nerve cord and the brain. And then an occlusion, a blocking of the tube, uh, allows pressure to build up in one area that swells it so that then that is a space for cell division to occur and form a brain, right? Then the brain will be encased in some type of, and I'm just gonna just put some kind of structure just over the top of it, um, just representing a cranium. And now in this group, what's gonna happen is that the notochord is going to disappear so they will not have a notochord. So there's no notochord. But it's not completely gone, right? Or vanished in, in that what will occur is then uh, bone formation will occur and bones will form around the nerve cord to protect it. These are the vertebrae. What was the notochord often gets restructured and rearranged, and it fills in the little spaces between the vertebrae. So they become these intervertebral discs all right, that are between the vertebrae and they originate from the notochord. So the notochord does not become the vertebra. The vertebrae form from different tissue. Um, but the notochord itself, while it's not there as a solid rod, uh, it is there in its remnants or rearrangement of it as the intervertebral disc. So this is going to be another common characteristic that the uh, vertebrates are going to have. Not all the vertebrates are going to have uh, an appendicular skeletal system, but what we're going to see is, is more development to the skeletal system. So we're going to have an axial 
skeletal system. That's kind of the vertebra and cranium. And then an appendicular system. So these are skeletal systems. Which is the beginning of branching out of limbs. So fins, wings, arms and legs. Um, and that's one of, some, one of the things we're going to get into is kind of the development of those structures, like the bones and how the bones are modified. The same bones are found in, well, not uh, ray fin fish, but in the sort of lung fish. Um, they'll have some bones in their appendages that are homologous to bones in you know, humans and, and birds kind of sharing the same bones. Um, but there's differences in rearrangements of them, difference in the sizes of them, but they're really the same structures that just kind of get, get rearranged. Um, but, so we're going to start to see you know, that all right, as well. Um, commonalities between some of the circulatory system and some of the other systems are things we're going to see, but those are the things that we're going to do as a lot of compare and contrast uh, how they are modified between the different, um, different groups of vertebrates. Um, and that's kind of you know, except we're going to spend a tons, of, a lot of time, you know, on this group. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it now. Um, what we want to just look at is just the overview here of who are the chordates. Um, chordates are the urochordates, the tunicates, these filter feeding uh, animals that live in the oceans, who have a little swimming larvae that has all the chordate characteristics. We, they are the cephalochordata, who are, as an adult. Um, actually display all the main characteristics all right, of the core uh, chordate traits. And then we have the vertebrates who will, um, many of them will have things like a tail. They'll have a rearrangement of the uh, pharyngeal gill slits in some way. So the fish will rearrange them into their actual gills. Other animals will have them rearranged into some part uh, of uh, eustachian tubes or things, uh, uh, structures within the ear. A variety of other kind of structures will arise from them. Um, and they'll all have the, the hollow dorsal nerve cord, which becomes your, your spinal cord uh, and the brain. And I said, there's the notochord will remain, but in a new form. Usually you do not see just the rod in uh, really any of them, uh, except some of the early groups we'll look at, the ones that actually don't have the, the vertebra, but they all have a cranium. So keep, keep that in mind. Uh, and that's sort of the introduction to chordates and, uh, and all we're going to cover for these two groups. Uh, so now for the rest of the time, we're just going to be focused on the evolution of the vertebrates um, and compare and contrast some of the structures and organ systems and all as we go uh, through those groups.